G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Getting on the trade content early this year. Uh, obviously the trade content is a pretty popular uh, aspect of this True Footy YouTube channel. Um, and I know a lot of people are interested in that sort of stuff. So I'm kind of thinking of doing like a, a little trade update probably once a month for a little while throughout the season. Obviously it's quite, pretty quiet at the moment um, and obviously ramp that up as it gets closer to October. But the point of this video is to kind of just discuss what are some of the stories that are bubbling away under the surface uh, regarding players at a contract. Um, you do get a little bit of news already, believe it or not. There are some new uh, news and rumors swirling. Um, so we'll, we'll do a little bit of a recap of what we've heard so far this year. And also it's worth keeping an eye on the list of players that are out of contract that will do come out of contract at the end of the year. I'm gonna shut the door behind me because I've basically moved out of this house it's completely empty and I'm echoing like a bitch so move out day is officially tomorrow which means this is probably gonna be the last video uh, that I ever do in this apartment uh, moved in here about three years ago and so this has been the host of about oh, probably 400 out of the 650 videos I've done on the true footy YouTube channel it's probably less than that but uh, yeah end of an era before we get into the trade rumors, guys, um, I just will shout out the sponsor of this video, who is manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping and all your male grooming needs or your, the products, be it the lawnmower 4.0 or all the liquid formulations you can get, the deodorants, the moisturizers, the crop reviver, the ball toner. Have a browse on the website. There's heaps of good stuff out there if you want to level up your male grooming routine. And like I said, 20% off and free shipping just by using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Cool, so in no particular order, I'm just gonna run through some of the stories that we've heard um, you know, pretty much since last October, even highlighting a couple of deals that didn't get done um, and some noteworthy players out of contract at the end of this year. So I'll start with uh, Matt Crouch. And the reason I start with this one is because if you remember last year, um, the news came out, I think it was the middle of the year, that he was already told by Matthew Nix and the Adelaide Crows that his contract would not be extended past the end of this season as well. So. It seems to me, you know, with the way Adelaide are going and progressing, and even though the results haven't gone their way in rounds one and two, obviously what they're trying to do is build a young side for the future. And Matthew Crouch, while well, he is a former best and fairest, if I'm not mistaken, and I believe he was absolutely pissed about not getting a contract extension, if you believe the report that came out. Regardless of all that, as a 28-year-old player coming out of contract in an Adelaide Crow side that probably doesn't need him, I dare say this one is a good candidate for a deal that will get done. He's currently injured and out of the side, so it remains to be seen whether he can come back in. And I dare say that with the opportunities he does get being a contract year as a free agent as well, this is the time for him to try and maximize, um, the, you know, obviously the income that he could earn at another side as well. But I think he's, he's kind of so far out of favor there that, that I think he'd just be happy to get a contract anywhere. So what would you, what can teams would you consider would be looking for an out of contract 28 year old midfielder who has a, a really good body of work earlier in his career, but now is probably going to be some depth or a big body for maybe perhaps a younger developer. Developing side. So one side I considered um, potentially the Gold Coast Suns, but more so as depth, certainly not as a, as a starting player. Potentially just like a backup midfielder for them as they, uh, as you know, the, the best 22 players really try and drive the results. Another club I considered as well would be GWS. Uh, it might seem lazy just going to the expansion sides, but as well you consider they're looking for players that want to play for him for a start. He has some stability to a side that um, has a good blend of youth and experience as well, and will certainly want to get young players into that side. But I think as a backup option, those are the two clubs that came for mind for me. But let me know in the comments what you think. Another story that has started to do the rounds and, and get a few clicks is uh, Will Day from Hawthorne, who has reportedly put off contract talks. Uh, not sure if it was specifically to the end of the year, but uh, is not entertaining a new contract right now for Hawthorne, and he is out of contract at the end of the year. Now, my first reaction to this is he's a good young player and probably would be an absolute priority signing for the Hawthorne Footy Club. And he's just started to transition permanently into the midfield. He got seven clearances against Sydney on the weekend as well. So from a development standpoint, I think he's going really well. He's had injury issues, but at as a midfielder, I think he does have a lot of potential. My gut feel here is he's probably just delaying contract talks so that he can start to put some form on the board and, and really start to make a name for himself and therefore he'll have a stronger um, bargaining point in terms of negotiating a new contract. So I don't think this one has any legs. I dare say both South Australian clubs will be red hot on this guy because, you know, he's a young, talented midfielder, probably fits every club in the competition's needs. So I expect this SA clubs will make a play. I don't know how Port will manage it without a first rounder and they've probably got some other targets as well. And apparently he's got a loose connection to the Gold Coast Suns. Um, obviously, I think it's his cousin, Sam, that plays there. Um, but then, of course, I think he grew up being a Gold Coast fan probably for that reason as well. Long story short, though, I think Will Day will stay at Hawthorne I'll be shocked if he doesn't. 
Another interesting one is Cozzy Pickett from the Melbourne Footy Club. And this uh, this won't really go away. I think it started bubbling away like last year towards the trade period. There was a little bit of talk that both SA clubs, in particular Port Adelaide, um, but even both WA clubs were making a play for Cozzy Pickett. And of course, he stayed with the Melbourne Footy Club because his contract ends at the end of this year. So my understanding is he loves the Melbourne Footy Club but isn't a huge fan of Melbourne itself, or at least that is what's reported. Obviously, there's a lot of BS when it comes to trade rumors as well, but I think he's telling Melbourne he loves the club, and somehow sources are leaking it to the media that he is not happy in Melbourne. So the WA connection is apparently he grew up in regional WA before moving to South Australia as well. So there's a potential for some sort of family connection there in Western Australia as well. So this one is one of the more interesting ones, and I think potentially does have some legs. Obviously, I don't have any inside news as to whether it's a real thing or not, but if he does want to come home, whether home for him is SA or WA, then I do think this has a chance. And of course, he does have the family connection. His uncle Byron played for the Port Adelaide Footy Club. So from Adelaide's perspective, it would be an interesting one because they've got so many good young small forwards in that side now, having spent a first round pick on Rankin last year and um, Rochelle and McAdam in that forward line as well, Cosie Pickett. He's good enough to recruit, but it's probably not a, an area of glaring need. Port Adelaide, on the other hand, don't have a first rounder having traded it for Jason Horn Francis last year. So it would be tough for Port Adelaide to strike a deal. A future first would be you know, a, a starting point, I would have thought. I don't know how strong the pool is to WA, so I'm sure both West Coast and Fremantle will have an absolute crack. I'll be a very, very happy man if we end up landing Cozzy Pickett. Um, but long story short, I think this one might have some legs. This one we'll have to wait and see on. Then we'll talk about the McGovern brothers. And I have no idea if this is an interesting story to any other part of uh, Australia other than West Coast and Carlton fans. But regardless, there's a little bit of talk uh, kind of constantly, but more so recently as well, that Mitch and Jeremy McGovern have intentions to end their career at the same club, wherever that club may be. I remember there was a lot of talk of it a couple of years ago. In fact, it might have been five years ago when Jeremy was, uh, yeah, because he signed a five-year contract. There was talk that he might defect to Fremantle and join Mitch there or something like that, which t turned out to be absolute BS. But I believe Jeremy McGovern has come out. He might have even said this on the Backchat podcast and said that in the past he's been in Mitch's ear trying to get him to West Coast. Um, and they even briefly discussed the possibility of ending up at Fremantle together. But Jeremy's preference was to be at West Coast. So both of these players are both out of contract at the end of this year. This talk that Jeremy is in talks with West Coast to re-sign. If they want to end up at the same club at the same time, I can't see it being Fremantle. And I feel like Carlton would have more interest in Jeremy than West Coast would have in Mitch. And I think that's largely due to the fact that Mitch is 28, turning 29, and um, probably doesn't fit the age profile of a West Coast. And even from a Carlton perspective, a 30-year-old Jeremy McGovern would help him in the short term, no doubt. But I don't know if this is something that I would be seriously looking at. As an Eagles fan, you know, Jeremy going to another club, if we got something in terms of draft collapse, makes sense like it would be something that we would benefit from that being said I kind of feel sentimental towards players particularly premiership players and it's not something that I'm red hot on but Mitch has also had a really good start at Carlton and I think with the way they're going there's a good chance he'd want to stay there for the ride as well so long story short on this one I think this has absolutely no chance of happening I don't think Mitch or Jeremy will play together at any point in their AFL careers then there's some rumors concerning both of the Sydney clubs, and one of them is Harry Hilmerberg from GWS to potentially the Sydney Swans, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the Swans, of course. Now, interestingly, even though the Giants aren't crash hot on the field right now, uh, they're battling some salary cap concerns, and it's believed that the contract that Himmelberg would likely garner would be around that $700,000 a year mark, which is crazy, but you know that's the way football is heading. And if you're wondering why GWS have salary cap issues, well, when you consider that all the massive contracts contracts they put their star players on a number of years ago, um, you're probably paying $5 million cumulatively to Toby Green, Lockie Whitfield, Stephen Cornelio, Josh Kelly, and Nick Haynes. And you also get to consider now, like Gold Coast, they're probably going to have to set or sell their players maybe inflated contracts to try and keep them at the footy club as well. So that is why Himmelberg is no lock to stay at the GWS Giants. Why the Swans specifically? Well, I'm referencing the Swans because that is what it was reported. Um, and when you consider they've obviously got potentially some money to play with after Buddy Franklin leaves and uh, no locked in key forward option. I do record this video straight after Amate kicked four goals and uh, Logan McDonald kicked five. So I actually personally think they'll be completely fine with just Logan McDonald. I don't know too much about Amati, but potentially he could fill that role as well. So I don't think this is a pressing need for the Swans, but I do think if there are salary cap issues and Harry Hilmerberg wants to capitalize on the best contract he can get, then potentially he heads to Victoria uh, for a club looking for a forward line option. So I think this one has some genuine legs too.
A West Australian one now, and Mitch Georgiatis, uh, there was a bit of a rumour that West Coast came hard for him at the end of last year with the Junior Rioli trade negotiations. West Coast reportedly asked for Mitch Georgiatis, and there was a little bit of a belief that Georgiatis was open to coming home to Western Australia at the conclusion of his contract, which is the end of this year, of course. Now, I do think a lot of the speculation was also drawn out from the fact that George Yards got dropped a couple of times last year. And at the moment, I believe he's in the side. He's played both games this year and so far so good. And if he stays in that Port Adelaide side, I can see you know a real reason why he would stay there considering I think the future is brighter Port Adelaide, I think. You also factor in, I think both WA footy clubs are looking for a young, tall key forward option. I know George Yards is a little bit of an undersized key forward, but regardless, I think the talent on this guy is huge and I believe both clubs will feel the same. So so it's been reported by Ryan Daniels, I think, that Fremantle are going to be into Georgiatis, and West Coast, I'd imagine, would be interested too, because I don't think we've quite, quite locked away our future forward line either. Who would he rather play for? I uh, don't know. I believe there's more of a West Coast connection, but I think Fremantle will likely go harder for him and potentially offer more money, but I, I'm not really privy to that. But I think this one has some potential, even though I think on balance, Georgiatis is more likely to stay than leave to Western Australia. Then there's Braden Fiorini, who uh, is a restricted free agent at the end of this year, having played eight years now at the Gold Coast Suns. Wow, that time has gone quick. And I, I mentioned him because in the past there was talk of him moving clubs up, I believe several times, but most recently last year, there was a bit of talk of him going to Collingwood, uh, who ended up going the Tom Mitchell route instead. So from the way it's reported, um, Fiorini sat down with Stewie Jew and discussed the opportunities, and Stewie Jew sort of led him to believe that the opportunities weren't going to be easily come by, I guess, in 2023. And I think in both games he's played so far, uh, one of them he was subbed off and one of them he was subbed on, which sort of demonstrates whereabouts he is in the pecking order as well. So while he did opt to stay at the Gold Coast Suns and try and find a way to break into that side, I do think he might be up against it to do that this year and therefore at the end of this year I can see him more likely than not shopping himself around Victoria and potentially finding a new football club. From the sounds of it him not going to Collingwood at the end of last year was more likely due to the fact that Collingwood found a better option in Tom Mitchell. I also want to talk about Tom DeConing from the Carlton Footy Club and this is potentially the biggest um, of the, the stories that I've gone through and I probably should have mentioned it earlier but the Sydney Swans apparently are mulling over a big contract offer to Carlton's Tom DeConing um, as I said with the Himmerberg stuff Sydney are going to have some money to play with uh, I think they're far from working out what their permanent ruck solution is and of course TDK can play forward as well so he kind of ticks both boxes for the Swans who have an aging Tom Hickey and of course Buddy Franklin as I mentioned before we see the raw potential with Tom Conning. He's got um, brilliant athleticism. To be honest, I can't see why, even though his contract ends at the end of this year, why he would want to leave Carlton, but I too often fall in the trap of thinking, why would you leave a team when things are going well? We do need to bear in mind that the contract he might get at Sydney might be massive. So I think there's some potential with this. It may not be Sydney, but Sydney are in a position to offer a bit of a godfather offer to someone like a Tom DeConning, if they so please. So this one, uh, I don't know if I'd offer a prediction as yet. He'd probably say, conservatively, more likely to stay than go but I think this one will draw out for a, quite a few months yet and the final one I'll talk about is Devin Robertson from the Brisbane Lions and I'm probably only interested in this one because I am a West Coast fan and uh, similar to Georgie Artis West Coast were apparently interested in Devin Robertson at the end of last year when you consider he's a young inside and I would say talented midfielder and you know the Lions just drafted Jasper Fletcher, Will Ashcroft, Josh Dunkley in a side that Devin was not maybe not struggling to get into he was playing well in the final series but regardless the competition there is really really strong so Devin Robertson loyally decided he wants to stay at the Brisbane Lions and compete for a spot in that side and I don't know if he's waiting for one of Zorko or Neil to drop off before he comes in I think he'll be waiting a while particularly in the case of Lucky Neil but he's been dropped already this year if I'm not mistaken as well and I think he's in the position where he can't spend too much more of his career on the sidelines playing VFL as well so I do think this one does have some potential to be a trade and I'm not necessarily saying that it will be to West Coast West Coast probably does have a need for young quality mids but I think with the recent drafts the need for the specific type of player that Devin Robertson is uh, might not be what it once was before we got someone like a Ruben Jinby and an Elijah Hewitt so I'm going to say Devin Robertson does move clubs at the end of the year because it's hard to fathom him breaking into that side and keeping his spot and being satisfied with not getting in if he doesn't so therefore I think Devin Robertson finds another club I think he's good enough to I'll be shocked if he doesn't but it may end up being someone in Victoria it may end up being a GWS who knows 
So that's it guys, that is my crack at the top eight to 10 stories or whatever, I'm probably missed something really obvious as well, but let me know if you enjoyed it and if you want, uh, let me know some other trade rumors you've heard and uh, potentially we can discuss them in future videos as well. As always guys, I really appreciate your support. Do do me a favor and check out Game Day Squad. I've done a video on uh, this new alternative to AFL Fantasy that you can now play and you can build your squad using footy cards and stuff like that and accumulate points and compete in competitions where there's weekly prizes. So make sure you go check it out in the link in the description. It is completely free to play. Thanks for your time, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.